Republicans have spent the last few days spreading the baseless claim that mass cancellations and delays by Southwest Airlines were due to President Biden's vaccine and testing requirements. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There was a big milestone today in the pandemic. 19 months after the U.S. closed its borders to the north and south, they're opening back up again. The U.S. set to announce plans to reopen the borders with Canada and Mexico, but only to certain travelers. This morning, America's signaling it's open for business from across the border again. The White House says it'll lift a 19-month ban for foreign travelers crossing land borders from both Canada and Mexico, but only for visitors who can prove they're fully vaccinated. Huge news for tourists, migrants, and the one guy who was on spring break in Cancun in March 2020 and didn't make it back out in time. Hey, it's me, Brad. Hey, can you forward my mail to a senior, what was your last name again, Frogs? No, it's not the bar, it's also a popular last name. Just forward my mail. And I, for one, miss Canadian tourists. They were so polite. If one was standing in Times Square taking up the whole sidewalk with their giant ass goose down coats, you could just give them a big old shove and they'd apologize to you. <laughs> oh, sorry for goosing the sidewalk, eh? I just never seen so many Legos. <laughs> so tourism is starting to come back. Although I will say, one of the many strange things about lockdown life is that after a year of not going anywhere, I forgot how to travel. You know how in the old days, you'd be kind of bummed if your Uber driver wanted to make small talk the whole time? Now, it's the other way around. The Uber driver is annoyed because I won't stop talking to them. So, where are you from? Uh, you know, around. You like driving? Yeah, sorry, I just can't hear you with the mask on. But the mask doesn't cover your ears. We had audiences back this week. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I've completely, completely forgotten how to pack for vacations. The first time I flew post-lockdown, TSA did a check in my suitcase and found 10 pairs of underpants, a monkey wrench, and a 100-ounce container of mustard. <laughs> the agent asked me, where are you going? And when I said LaGuardia, he said, this is JFK, to which I said, I don't remember how this works. <laughs> I used to get to the airport by the skin of my teeth 45 minutes before takeoff, just enough time to skate through pre-check, chug a Bloody Mary at the bar next to the Hudson News, and then buy the coldest chef salad ever made <laughs> at a Friday's to go, you know, ham chunks like ice cubes. Now, I'm so desperate to get out of the house, I show up four hours early and get so bored, I end up browsing those luggage stores at the airport, which I've never understood. Who shows up to the airport <laughs> needing luggage? Hey, you got anything I can put all these clothes in? <laughs> An airport trying to sell you luggage is like Taco Bell trying to sell you weed. Oh, yeah, we're good, Taco Bell. We, <laughs> we like, already thought of that. <laughs> I'm not the only one reacquainting myself with travel etiquette. Remember when Rudy Giuliani got caught shaving at an airport? Rudy Giuliani was caught using an electric shaver, okay, out in public at the airport. But here's the thing. He was sitting at the table eating while he did it. So Jeannie most shows you a guy who saw him, had to get it on video, and now millions see it. First he had lobster bisque. Then he began grooming. Stars, they're just like none of us. <laughs> yeah, that really happened. This dingus used to be the mayor of New York and personal attorney to the president of the United States. And now he's at Pat Lafrida's in Terminal B getting chin hairs all over his table. <laughs> Excuse me, wait a minute, there's hair in my soup. I demand a refund. Well, you are shaving, fair point. What do you think we go have these? <laughs> not only have people forgotten how to act in airports, the same is true on airplanes, because suffice it to say, it's been a rough year for the friendly skies. The newest problem facing pent up demand for travel is pent up frustrations in the sky, with federal agencies citing a serious surge of in-flight fights. The number of fights between passengers and airline workers are on the rise. We've had to deal with uh, almost riot-like incidences. Fist fights, drinking, verbally and physically assaulting flight attendants. 2,500 cases so far this year. 2,500 reports already from the airlines of passengers engaging in fights, arguing over the masks, drinking. Damn, I mean, usually when I get drunk on a plane, I just pass out watching a movie I've never heard of, like Naughty Grandpa or Crazy Christmas, starring Owen Wilson as a college dropout who gets hired to be the real Santa Claus. We gotta make all these toys ourselves? Jeez, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
And just to be clear, now that an audience is back, I will not be doing my Vince Vaughn impression. Truth be told, truth be told, I just don't have the confidence to do it in front of people. Although, you know, if Vince Vaughn were here, I don't know. I feel like he'd probably say something like, uh... Buddy, 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 what are you talking about? That impression is money. Seriously, though. Oh, boy. How'd it go? They applauded before. <laughs> Seriously, though, what is wrong with people? Flying is stressful enough without drinking fistfights and riots. Air travel is turning into a soccer match at Wembley Stadium. One time, I accidentally cut a dude in line, and he screamed, you <laughs> wanker, and then headbutted me. <laughs> then he bought me a pint. Point is, soccer is a weird sport. Things are getting so out of hand, United just added a section after first class and coach that's just an MMA-style octagon, and your boarding pass looks like this. <laughs> the point is... <laughs> we should have gone with an old Scottish detective. <laughs> we should have called back that cold. <laughs> Once again, if you're watching A Closer Look online, uh, wait eight hours and then watch the monologue that we post later, and then you'll get that sweet callback to old Scottish detective. <laughs> The point is, air travel has already been bad enough this year, but over the weekend, it got even worse for thousands of travelers who were stranded thanks to a meltdown at Southwest Airlines. The travel nightmare for thousands of passengers after Southwest Airlines canceled more than 2,200 flights in just the past three days. Stranded passengers again today. Hours-long lines at the Denver airport just to reschedule flights. About 90 more flights canceled today as Southwest Airlines struggles to get back to normal after days of chaos and cancellations. Tonight, travel, chaos, and confusion. Southwest Airlines cancels thousands of flights, leaving passengers stranded. Lines were long and tempers were short at airports in several cities as passengers were forced to wait hours and in some cases, days, yes, days, to get on other flights. Can you imagine waiting days to reschedule a flight? That's not rescheduling anymore. You just live in the airport now. <laughs> Welcome to Cinnabon. What can I get you? I don't know, a job application? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one has ever said, Welcome to Cinnabon at an airport. <laughs> the best you're going to get is, let me guess, two? <laughs> and it's especially bad for Southwest because a lot of their passengers are flying to places like Florida on vacation. It'd be one thing if you were stuck in the airport on your way to a business trip, but if you're going to Disney, with your family and you're three days late. All right, everyone, we made it. We got 45 minutes inside the park, then we gotta turn around and go home. Why don't you kids go wait in line at Space Mountain while your mother and I go get divorced? Now, <laughs> the company, the pilots union, and the FAA have all attributed the chaos to various factors, from weather, to air traffic control, to antiquated scheduling technology. The airline and the president of the Southwest Pilots Union have said repeatedly the meltdown has nothing Nothing to do with vaccine mandates, but that hasn't stopped some on the right from spreading the baseless claim anyway. Some congressional Republicans said it's a sick out in response to the vaccine mandates. Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs tweeted, I stand with Southwest Airlines employees who are fighting against these mandates. The union president for Southwest Pilots told Fox News there is no sick out. These issues are because of poor management. Senator Ted Cruz blaming President Joe Biden's, quote, illegal vaccine mandate for the shortage. We can tell you that the shutdown of Southwest Airlines Airlines over the weekend was a direct consequence. It was a reaction to Joe Biden's vaccine mandates. There were more cancellations at Southwest Airlines today. No doubt there will be more to come, and not just of airline flights. At least two Amtrak train routes in the Northeast were canceled over the weekend, and so was a regularly scheduled car ferry in Washington State out to the San Juan Islands. In all cases, the employees in question who have been told to get the shot did not show up. Were these also protests against the Biden shot mandates? We can't say for certain. It certainly wouldn't surprise us. You can't say for certain? Well, then please, by all means, put it on television. We all know that's how journalism works. Who can forget the famous Woodward and Bernstein headline, did Nixon do Watergate? Seems like the kind of thing he'd do, but who knows? <laughs> I'll just never, personally, I'll never tire of Tucker's just asking questions routine. Were these protests against Biden's vaccine mandate? Did Joe Biden secretly replace all the real pilots with communist Antifa Wokanistas? Or were the delays caused because the flight attendants refused to give you a second bag of Biscoff cookies when you asked 
For one, because according to them, the plane was taking off soon. And when they asked you to put up your tray table, you said no, because you still had one Biscoff cookie left that you were saving for later. And if you put it in your lap, you'd get crumbs on your nicest travel slacks. And when they threatened to remove you from the plane and you said it was your God-given right under Article 67, Section Z of the United States Constitution, Part 9, to do what you wanted with your Biscoff cookie, the guy next to you said, loud enough for everyone on the plane to hear Biscoff, more like jerk off, and everyone laughed. Even the pilots laughed because you could hear them chuckling over the intercom. And when you then lie down in the aisle as means of protest and screamed, I'm not moving until everyone on this plane gets unvaccinated, only to be told that wasn't possible. Did you yell, it is possible, you can poop it out? I read it on Facebook. But before you could provide the link for everyone to read, did a large man lift you up and shove you into the overhead compartment while everyone cheered? Could that be why the plane was delayed? Well, we can tell you that it is because it happened to me yesterday. And that wasn't the only example. Another show on Fox found a way to tie it all the way back to what else? The war on Christmas. The left's war on Christmas could continue <laughs> with delays and shortages of pilots right around the holidays. Yeah, Mayor Pete's going to have his hands full. I mean, he is, is really he anyway? in charge of that. Where is Mayor Pete if you know. have all this labor action happening right before the holidays, Christmas? This is Okay, first of all, it's October. You don't get to start with the war on Christmas yet. We're still in the middle of the war on Halloween. I'm talking to you people with the motion sensor skeletons on their porches. When I walk my children to school, they shouldn't have to hear their father yelp like a chihuahua because he thinks an army of the undead are coming for him. Plus, my kids are still mad at me for using them as human shields. Take the boys! I have no quarrel with you, Skeleton King! But seriously, Fox News, take it one holiday at a time. At least come up with a fake conspiracy theory about Halloween first. The left wants to cancel jack-o'-lanterns. Faces are too scary for their snowflakes, so now they've changed the name of Halloween to All Gourds Day. Also, true story, I ordered a pirate costume online for my son to trick or treat in, and they emailed back saying, should be there by October 28th. What's the date of your event? <laughs> What's the date? I need a pirate costume for a three-year-old? Oh, uh, November 23rd, we celebrate Swashbuckler Thanksgiving. <laughs> Again, both the airline and the president of Southwest Pilots Union have said repeatedly that the Southwest meltdown had nothing to do with the vaccine mandate. In fact, the president, of the Southwest Pilots Union said it on Fox News. I've seen a lot of people invested in this idea that this is somehow related to vaccine mandates. There's just no evidence of that. You say it was not at issue, but to what degree did it contribute to this problem at all? Zero. You're saying this was not because of a sick out. This was not an organized job action. Had nothing to do yet with the vaccine mandate. Absolutely not. The two are mutually exclusive. What we've seen now that we're at Monday and looking back at the data, um, our pilot sick rates were right in line with where they were this summer. Um, we also see our pilots picking up even more than normal uh, now. Um, so our pilots are out there um, serving our customers. They're out there picking up extra time. So uh, it is absolutely false that, that our pilots are, are engaged in any sort of job action. That last clip was on Fox News. I mean, do you guys even watch your own network? That'd be like if I came out here and said, Chicago doesn't have fires. <laughs> or if I said, in the criminal justice system, the people aren't represented by two separate but equally important groups. Look. It's especially rich for Fox hosts to applaud employees standing up against vaccine or testing requirements when their own company has much stricter requirements. Fox's vaccine policy actually goes further than Biden's. Remember, Biden is calling for weekly testing of many private sector workers who don't get vaccinated. In a newly revealed internal memo, Fox outlining a vaccine policy that is stricter, involving daily COVID testing. Fox management is mandating that employees disclose their vaccination status. Fox has a strict policy of demanding all their workers be vaccinated or face daily testing. 90% of the Fox workforce reports that they are now fully vaccinated. That's right, they have to get that swab shoved up their nose once a day. I'm vaxxed, but I still get tested three times a week and it sucks. Remember in the early days when they had to shove it really far up and it made you cry? One time they shoved the swab so far up my nose, I forgot three years of college and I had to give my degree back. The only swabbing I like is when I use a roll to soak up the remaining gravy on my plate during Swashbuckler's Thanksgiving. We call it swabbing. <laughs> and yeah, when the first Swashbuckler's Thanksgiving joke didn't work great, I was aware, I was aware that a callback was coming and 
there was no way to get out of it. <laughs> this is the sort of new gambling you do with an audience. <laughs> I hope it was worth it for all you people at home. <laughs> the hypocrisy here is brazen, and it's something that President Biden seems to enjoy pointing out, as he did last week. Even this I always get a kick out of. Fox News. <laughs> Fox News requires vaccinations for all employees. Give me a break. Fox News. Oh, damn. He busted out the Biden whisper. <laughs> the one where he sounds like he's doing ASMR. And next time he does that, he should crinkle a bag of potato chips. Even Fox News requires vaccination. <laughs> all their employees. Chris. Kringly crackers, crackling, cranky craisins. <laughs> Biden wasn't entirely precise there. Fox requires employees to report their vaccination status. And if they're not vaccinated, they get tested daily. Biden's policy is to get vaccinated or get tested weekly. So Fox's policy is actually stricter. And yet Republican politicians across the country have decided to rail against vaccine mandates. You know what would really ruin the holidays? Another COVID spike. Oh my God, does that? Does that mean Republicans are part of the war on Christmas? This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses. And they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe. Get vaccinated. We love you.